Mr. Mayor, I formally need to advise members that I have circulated a written statement which details uh, the new cabinet uh, portfolios, uh, indicates that uh, Barbara Rice will be deputy leader, and sets out the responsibilities of each uh, portfolio. I would like to make a, a few remarks. The first is that we, we have seven new members here this evening. Uh, that's the most new members that we've had for 10 years. Uh, the, the, the most new members we've had since the last time we had European elections on the same day as local elections. <laughs> now we know why you give enjoy Europe quite as much as they do. <laughs> what I would like to do is, is to uh, really warmly welcome all seven new members, uh, regardless of the party they represent. Uh, I've always said, Mr Mayor, that the one thing that all of us here have in common is that we all want to do our bit to improve our communities. Now we may differ on some areas of policy, but that fundamental de desire to serve the community of Thurrock is, I am sure, shared by every one of us. I'm sure that our new members will quickly find their feet and come to terms with the role that they've taken on. Uh, they will soon find that it is a role unlike any other. It is a 24-7, 365 days a year job. It's often thankless, it's frequently frustrating, at times it's annoying, but ultimately it is incredibly rewarding. For me, it is most of all rewarding to, <coughs> to intervene to resolve issues for our constituents, sometimes issues that seem irreconcilable to them. And if I can give a word of advice to any new member, it would be to always remember the importance of being there for your constituents. And actually, Mr. Mayor, if I could give a second word, it would be to, as Reverend Barlow has already suggested, to very quickly develop a thick skin. Avoid dwelling on some of the half-truths and distortions that you may see in the media, and at all costs, avoid reading the comments that are posted on websites. <laughs> Being a councillor carries, of course, a wider responsibility than just representing constituents. And this year, more, more than most years, it is really important that we all take our responsibility seriously, as we face an increasingly difficult task to balance our budgets in the face of ever-increasing cuts to our grant. Uh, we must all remember that when we reduce spending in any area, it has consequences. Services that people are used to, that people expect, and often that people rely on, will change. And in the worst cases, it will disappear altogether. Frequently, the cuts that we, meet, that we make will mean that people lose their jobs. So it's important to consider those consequences too. Redundancies affect a whole family, husbands, wives, and children. It is life-changing, almost always in a way that isn't positive. And it could well mean, with a certain amount of irony, but it increases the pressure on our services too. Additionally, making redundancies doesn't just mean not paying someone's wage. We have to consider how much that redundancy will cost in cash terms to the council and in terms of benefits uh, to the nation as a whole. Mr Mayor, internally we've already started calling for people to consider voluntary redundancies. Some will come forward and some of those we will be able to accept. But I really do fear that this year and next we will have to make more enforced redundancies. And I ask that all members carefully consider the effect before calling for any change. If I can turn to areas outside of budgets, Mr Mayor, we're expecting the government to announce its decision for the new Thames crossing uh, in sometime in the next few weeks. Which does mean that it's all the more important that everyone who feels strongly about this signs our online petition as soon as possible. It's on our website, if you go to the website, you click the transport tab and you find it there. On a more positive note, the government will soon be making its announcements about infrastructure funding uh, and we have been working really hard with our partners, with local businesses, um, with other South Essex councils, with Bowser and Castle Point, Rochford, South End, and yes of course with our friends at County Hall, uh, to put together a detailed, strong, robust bid uh, which is agreed across South Essex and it includes funding to, a, to improve transport in and around Lakeside, to bring forward our exciting vision for Perfleet, uh, for Gracetown Centre improvements, and to provide good quality skills training for local people so that they can get the jobs that will be created at London Gateway and the expanded port of Tilbury. And of course, Mr Mayor, the key to unlocking all of our growth potential, that is the widening of the A13 to 3 lanes. All of this has been agreed with our South Essex partners, uh, with the South East Let partners, and crucially, uh, across this chamber. Finally, Mr Mayor, I think I've already said that I think we have had a more dignified chamber over the last year than sometimes we've had in the past. And I do hope that continues in the year ahead, that we leave personalities out of our debates, and that we agree where we agree, disagree where we disagree, but above all, remember 
that we're all of us here to serve the community of Thurrock, and that must be our first priority. Thank you.